Uh, I was incarcerated for 32 years in New York State Prison. I came home around two and a half years ago. Parole prep was uh, instrumental in helping me come home. They got three lawyers without charge. Um, and it makes plenty of sense to me that we would be prepared to go to the parole board. This is my third parole board. When they came in, they helped me and I was released. The other two times I was held. And as a justice system, when a person goes to a jury, uh, they are prepped by an attorney. If they go on the stand to testify, they are prepped by an attorney. If they are speaking for the state or in a criminal charge, they're always prepped by an attorney. When individuals go to the parole board, there's no attorney to help us. And so it's a, a perfect type of situation that we feel perfectly strange about because we are in a an environment for like 30 years or, or, or more or less where uh, our skills aren't that good with interacting with people. We're not used to three or four colors, we're only used to two colors, white and green. And uh, speaking to people about the most intimate details of our life are very is very difficult uh, for the worst moment of your life to tell somebody about in, in, in around 10 minutes. So parole prep came in at an ideal time in my life and so many other people's lives. It, they actually filled the void of what we was facing. And so uh, they have a high success rate now, around 60, 70%, right? Or, or more at times. It depends on what time of the year. And um, I think the last nine, the last nine was nine for nine, so they hit home runs. <laughs> So what do, what do parole prep do besides it, get people home? Well, they prep lawyers and, and college students that want to get involved with this. They go and they conscious raise. Uh, and they go to some of these dynamite places where people are, are already turn, tuned on up and they want to be enlisted. Uh, they want to be organizers. They want to be activists. And so they bring them in, they train them. But that's not the only thing that they do. Uh, they go and they interface with lobbyists to change laws that's going to influence individuals coming home. In the next 10 years, it's estimated that one out of every three people that's inside a prison will, in fact, be over the age of 50 years old. New York State has the second largest population of parole eligible life. The second largest. One out of every five people sentenced in New York State prison have a life sentence. We are one of the most punitive states in the union right now. That in this state that we're living in on our watch, and it's no wonder why they call this the Empire State. And and so uh, what what they do too is after an individual is released, they also like people like me, they get them involved. <laughs> right? And so there are other things that they see a void in that they want to also become um, involved in. They want to help people get jobs. They want to help people uh, um, uh, fill out their goals. They want to help people with their resumes, with interview skills, with tech skills. Those are other areas that they are projecting to get involved in in the near future. And so we want you to feel as part of our success. Right now, in the last two years, we have achieved more success than some nonprofits in the last 20 years. We have influenced seven new openings in the parole, uh, inside the parole board commissions. We had seven outs out, and seven new ones came in. You know where they came in from? Different dip uh, demographics from the five boroughs. People that believe that people can change. We have several more openings. So if you're interested in there, it's $106,000 a year opening, a dynamite job, and we've been told to send their resumes to a Como office and they will interview them. They already started that process. So in other words, we became stakeholders that advocate for a uh, different composition of the parole board. Uh, we have other staffs. Uh, that we need to be replaced on the parole board. 
I think another thing that um, that they do is that at times they represent over 240 other nonprofits in the great state of New York on prison reform issues when they go to speak. I don't know about you, but the last time I saw Michelle Lewin speak, I felt so proud of her. And she, uh, I mean, she is a force to be reckoned with. And I tell people it's hard to say no to her. <laughs> so um, if you want to uh, talk to me later on, I'm open. There's other speakers, other speakers that's going to be speaking tonight. I do want, want you to know that for everything you do give towards this, you are impacting people's lives, their family, and their neighborhoods, and hundreds of thousands of other individuals that they're going to impact once they come home. The stacks are true. When people take life, they don't do it again. They're not serial killers. This is the first time for many of us that we ever did anything like this, and we're not built to hurt people. We're 50, we're 60 years old. All we want to do is get home and help people now. Right? That's why we don't come back. Como is not closing the prisons. We are. We're not coming back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.